Now, the second way that we sometimes deal with additional things in our uh, soil chemistry problems is concentration. So if you think about this, we have solids, liquids, gases, and solutions. Okay, Solids we can use mass for. Liquids we can use mass for. A lot of times, though, liquids we need density for. Sometimes masses we need density for. Gases we're going to ignore for now. We're going to deal with them later on. But the solutions, okay, that last one, when we have something in solution, to deal with that in chemistry and still chemistry problems takes a little bit more work, okay? Now, a solution, if we recall, that means you have a concentration. That means you've taken some sort of solute, some sort of solid, most likely substance, a solute, and you have dumped it or poured it into water to create a solution, okay? So usually when we talk about concentration, we're dealing with that ratio of the amount of solute dissolved, typically to water, to create a solution, okay? When we talk about these concentrations, we always identify the relationship of the solute and we assume water is there, okay? So when you're talking about a concentration of a solution, we don't say a water solution. We just say we have a hydrochloric acid solution. The hydrochloric acid is identified in the solute, okay, in your solutions. Now, concentrations can be measured lots of different ways. We can do parts per million, parts per billion. There's things called normality and molality. There's percent by mass, there's percent by volume. But there's just a few that we see in chemistry, okay? Of all the different ways that we can do concentration, there is one that is by far the most used concentration. It's the one that we use almost universally for our normal chemical reactions. That's called molarity, okay? And we've been using that this year also. We've talked about molarity before. We just haven't defined it before. So molarity is symbolized by a capital M. And the molarity of a substance is actually a calculation of the moles of your solute divided by the liters of your solution. Okay? So you know your moles of solute and the volume of whatever your solution happens to be. Okay? Usually we shorten this down just to say moles per liter on this. Now, one little trick that I use, a lot of times if I see a capital M, I just cross it out and I write in moles per liter. That reminds me that this is a concentration and it's a ratio between moles and liters, okay? So let's kind of go through an example down here. If we have a six molar solution, okay, a six capital M solution, a six molar hydrochloric acid solution, that means we're going to have six moles of HCl of solute in every one liter solution. So if we say it's a 6 capital M, it's the same as saying 6 moles per liter, or for every 1 liter, we're going to get 6 moles. So once again, all we've done is created a new or additional conversion factor that allows us some more flexibility in our math. A lot of chemistry is done in solution. We have a lot of things that we dissolve in water, and we know concentrations very commonly. So for us to be limited to not be able to deal with them mathematically is unrealistic. So we have to be able to work in and out of concentrations as part of our math. Okay? So, let's do a little practice with this one also. We have 325 milliliters of a 0 0.500 molar HCl solution. What mass and grams of HCl solute do you have in this solution? Okay. So, we started off, we have 325 milliliters of a solution, okay? So, the 325 is the number that we want to start with because that's not a ratio. That's an exact amount, okay? So we have 325 uh, milliliters of our HCl solution. And it's a 0 0.50 molar solution, okay? Now remember, molarity is moles per liter. So my first step, anytime I'm dealing with concentration, is to convert from 1,000 milliliters to 1 liter. Okay, so we do a quick little SI unit conversion, and then we know that for every one liter, we have 5.00 moles. This is where the, the 5 molar solution comes from, okay? We have two, two zeros on that, okay? So to say 5 molar, same thing as saying it's 5 moles per liter, okay? Well, now we've converted from milliliters to liters, liters to moles. Well, now we're in moles. And moles is easy for us because we've been doing that so much. We know that for every one mole, we can find the molar mass in grams of HCl. So if we go to HCl, chlorine is 35.45, hydrogen is 1.01. .01, so its molar mass is 36.46 grams. That's going to allow us to solve for grams 
of HCl. Okay. Take a look at it. Sure enough. Oh, actually, both answer keys came up there. That's okay. Sure enough, we have 325, 1,000 to liters. Here's our molarity, back to our molar mass, and we know our grams of HCl. Okay. Same kind of problem down here. Let's just kind of walk through this one together. If you have 55.5 grams of HCl to make 3.11 molar solution, what volume of solution do you have? That, again, is a useful tool for us mathematically. So we start with our mass. Now we go from mass to moles using molar mass. And then moles back to liters. So we're using the molarity, the capital M. Again, it's moles per liter. And then liters back to milliliters to tell us our volume. Now you could have stopped here and just gave it to me in liters, but the question said, what volume of solution do you have in milliliters? So it's actually requesting this conversion into milliliters here. Okay. Now neither of these practice problems deal at all with true stoichiometry. Because you notice we're starting with hydrochloric acid and ending with hydrochloric acid. So a true stoichiometry problem takes this idea and then brings it into or encompasses it with um, that kind of process. Okay, so we'll do one more calculation here, and then we will uh, show this as practice, and then we will go from there. So now if we want to do stoichiometry with molarity, again, we need a balanced chemical equation. So we have two hydrochloric acids, zinc, some hydrogen, making zinc chloride. And let's work through this problem together, okay? So we have 1.04 grams of zinc. And we want to solve for how many milliliters of acid we're going to use. So at the end of this thing, we're going to have milliliters of HCl. Okay? So our first step, we have grams of zinc. Let's get to moles. We always want to go to moles as soon as possible. So we need zinc's molar mass. So we look up zinc, and zinc is 65.38. So 65.38 grams of zinc. Per one mole of zinc. Then we want our mole ratio because we want to get from zinc to hydrochloric acid as soon as possible. So looking up here, we have for every one zinc, it looks like we have two HCLs. So for every one mole of zinc, we have two moles of HCL. Well, if we have moles of HCL, we can then find mass of HCl if we wanted grams, but we don't want grams here. We don't want a mass. We want a volume of a solution. So instead of actually going to grams, we're not going to do that here. We have moles of HCl. We're going to go use the molar mass or the molarity. This has this is a 6.00 molar solution, which means it's 6.00 moles per liter. So I have moles of HCl, so I can say it's 6.00 moles of HCl for one meter of HCl, okay? And the question asks for how many milliliters of HCl we have. So our last step is for every one liter, it's a thousand milliliters to solve this. We've gone from grams of zinc to moles of zinc to moles of HCl to liters of HCl to milliliters, and we solve, okay? Take a look at it. And sure enough, we see the process through, and we get 5.30 milliliters of HCl. Okay. Once again, here's an additional practice problem down here. In this case, we're kind of flipping the scenario again. You have a volume of your acid, and we want to know how many grams of hydrogen gas you can make from it. So very much like all our other practices we've done, we're doing similar to this, but instead we know the opposite information for our second practice problem. Okay, go ahead and try that one on your own. Pause the video. When you're done, we'll come back to take a look at the answer. Okay, so we have 4.5 milliliters of HCl. We got to get from milliliters to liters. We can use the molarity now. We had six molar HCl, so for every one liter, there's six moles. Got to moles. Moles is important. Mole ratio for every two moles of HCl, we have one mole of hydrogen. For every one mole of hydrogen, we get two grams, and we end up with being 0 0.027.
Okay. We only have two layers of precision or two sig figs here, so my answer can only be in two sig figs at the end here. Okay. All right, one last slide for you guys. So this chart might look a little overbearing, or it might be a little bit aggressive, but if you take a look at it, what it does is it maps out everything that you guys need to solve these problems. It kind of gives you a guide, okay? This exact same chart is also posted on our student files for you, so you can print off a copy or put it in Notability if you want. Real quickly, notice how we have some about a volume of a gas here, and I wrote the word big words later. Right now, we haven't worked with this equation yet, so we're not going to deal with volume of a gas. However, volume of a solid or liquid we can do by using density. Volume of a solution we can do by using molarity. We can do particles into moles by using Avogadro's number, but we rarely use this, so I wouldn't worry too much about this. In fact, I wouldn't worry about doing this calculation at all. Once you know moles, you have your bridge. This is the most important part of this whole thing, is to build a bridge from one given substance to an unknown substance. Once you know moles of your thing you're looking for, you can use molar mass to get to mass, density to get to volume, or molarity to get back to a solution. Okay, So it kind of gives you a guide of which way to go and how to work. So if you're kind of lost in, well, what do I do next? Start with this. Let this help you out. Do that. All right, guys.